Good morning students, how are you all? I am happy to bring to you all this video with question answers of the lesson down the rabbit hole which is in unit 12 of class 11's compulsory English book with a theme fantasy. Now let's straight away turn to page 113 ways with words. A. Find the meanings of the following words and phrases from a dictionary and make sentences by using them. Number one, peep into, which means to look quickly into. I peeped into the room to see how many guests were there. Number two, pop down, which means to go somewhere quickly to do something. We popped down to the nearby beauty parlor to get ready for Ravina's birthday party. Number three, remarkable, which means very good or extraordinary. Binod is doing a remarkable work in the marketing sector. Number four, hedge, which means a group of shrubs or small trees growing somewhere. She hurt herself when she tried to jump over the hedge of that botanical garden. Number five, wonder. It has two meanings. To walk about without any purpose. He was wandering in the garden at that time, which means just walking around or strolling without any purpose. Another meaning is surprised. I was wondering how he completed that difficult task in such a short duration of time. Six, tumble which means to fall down in a round, round manner. The child tumbled into the hole when trying to grab the dog. Number seven, doze off, which means to fall asleep for a short while. My mother dozed off in the car as she was very tired. Number eight, earnestly, which means sincerely or honestly. She had bought that property working earnestly in her life. Spelling of earnestly is E-A-R-N-E-S-T-L-Y. And another word honestly is H-O-N-E-S-T-L-Y. One is earnestly and another is honestly. We don't call it honestly. No, it's honestly. Number nine, tiny, which means very small. Her dog had tiny eyes and long ears. Number 10, creep, which means move slowly and carefully in order to avoid being noticed. He was creeping around in others' garden at night. Now turn the page and we have question B. Match the words below with their opposites. A. Beginning, ending. B. Stupid, clever. C. Natural, artificial. D. Disappointment, happiness. E. Ignorant, educated. F. Anxiously, calmly. Now question C. Pronouncing S, F, S and Z. That S, F, S and Z. Z. A. Practice the pronunciation of the following pairs of words. C. She. Sip. Ship. Sort. Short. Save. Shave. Sock. Shock. Seat. Sheet. So. Show. Sew. Show. Sit. Shit. Said. Shed. Sake, shake, seep, sheep. B. Pronounce the following minimal pairs of words correctly. Price, prize. Rice, rise. Peace, peas. Lose, loss. Bus, buzz. Face, phase. Seal, seal, zeal. Device, Device. Some have sound, S sound, and others have Z or Z sound. 
If you don't pronounce these words properly and accordingly, then the next person listening to you will have difficulty understanding what you mean to say. We cannot say we all should live peacefully. We should say we all should live peacefully. But we say where are the green peas and not where are the green peas. Now comes the comprehension part. A. Answer these questions. A. What did Alice do while her sister was reading a book? Alice was tired of sitting by her sister on the bank of the river and of having nothing to do while her sister was reading a book. So she was considering in her mind whether to pick the daisy flowers and make garland out of it. Question B. Why did Alice run across the field after the rabbit? Alice suddenly saw a pink rabbit wearing a waistcoat passing hurriedly by her talking to himself and when he took out a watch out of his waistcoat pocket, it made Alice so surprised and curious that she ran across the field after the rabbit. Question C. Why didn't she like to drop the czar? What did she do with it? She didn't want to drop the czar as she thought it would kill someone at the bottom of the well. So she put the czar in one of the shelves attached to the walls of the deep well or hole. Question D. What idea came to her mind when she saw a, a tiny golden key? Answer. When Alice fell into the hole, at last she landed upon a heap of sticks and dry leaves, but she did not get hurt. She got up and walked into a long hall where there were many doors on all sides. She tried to open them, but they were all locked. She looked around and suddenly in one corner she saw a three-legged table made of glass and on top there was a tiny golden key. The idea came to her mind that she might be able to open one of the doors with that key. Question E. What was written on the bottle that she found? Did she follow what it said? She saw a bottle with a level drink me. At first she was afraid to drink the liquid that was inside the bottle as she thought it might be poison. So she looked if there was another level attached to it in which it was written poison. As she found none, she at last tasted the liquid inside the bottle. She found it very nice. It had a sort of mixed flavor of cherry tart, custard, pineapple, roasted turkey, toffee and hot buttered toast. So she quickly finished it off. Question F. Alice was fond of pretending to be two people. Who were they? Alice was fond of pretending to be two people. One was that of a wise girl and the other a stupid one. Sometimes she did very stupid things and told herself to act wisely and become respectable. Question G. Why did she want to eat the cake that she found? Answer. At the end part of the story, when Alice was too small to climb up the glass table to get the key that she kept there, she became very disappointed and suddenly she saw a piece of cake inside a glass box. There it was written, eat me, with currants, that means dark or dry grapes. This ma manka dark haruli, likhi kutiyo kalu dark haruli. This like English ma currants on answer. So she made up her mind to eat it, thinking if she grew larger after eating it, she could reach the key to open the door to the garden. And if she grew even smaller than the present size, then also she could creep under the door into the garden. Thus, she thought that both ways could lead her into the garden, which was her ultimate desire. 
Now question B, students, put these sentences in the right order as they happen in the story. F is number one. Alice saw a white rabbit and ran after him. Then C is number two. Alice fell down a rabbit hole. B is number three. Alice found a small key and unlocked a very small door. Then D is number four. Alice drank something from a bottle and got very small. E is number five. Alice tried to climb a table leg to get the key again. And A is number six. Alice ate a small cake which said, eat me. Now comes the critical thinking part. A. Down the rabbit hole is a sort of writing called fantasy. On the basis of your reading of the story, point out some special elements of this kind of writing. Answer. Fantasy is a genre we find in story or fiction in which we find lots of miracles and unrealistic supernatural happenings. The plot, setting and characters of the story are very strange and unnatural. This actually makes the story very interesting, unusual and extra imaginative. In this story, the rabbit wears a waistcoat, carries a chain watch and also speaks like us human beings. This makes the story very interesting. Alice falls into the rabbit hole and keeps on falling for a long period of time. During this time, she could think about so many things and do so many acts like putting back the czar into the shelf which is attached on the wall of the hole. Can this be possible in real life? No, not at all. Students, you can talk about similar incidents you find in the story which makes it extra special. Like I'll give you some hints in brief. Cupboards, bookshelves, maps and pictures on the walls of the rabbit hole, magical cake and the drink bottle, a glass box with magical cake which says eat me and that magical drink bottle which says drink me and that special golden key which could open the door to a heavenly garden becoming too tiny with clothes fitting at the same time very small door magical garden and that drink with varieties of taste which is really rare in the real world and Alice body folding like a telescope that magical tunnel with many doors. The story has so many such elements which is found in this kind of writing. Question B, is it good to imagine about the things which are not possible to achieve in reality? Explain. Yes, I think it is good to imagine about the things which are not possible to achieve in reality. It is boring to always live in reality or to live in the real world. Our daily activities are so monotonous and repeating. So people want to see, hear and feel the imaginative world, a make-believe world where so many impossible things are possible. Sometimes they want to enjoy themselves in a make-believe world in order to relax and have fun. It doesn't cost anything to flow in your imagination. A make-believe world can give you tremendous pleasure and happiness. So that's why people resort to fiction movies, stories, drama, music, poetry, art and paintings like abstract art to experience this imaginative and creative world. Question C. Do you talk to yourself when you are in a trouble? If yes, how does it help you? Yes, I talk to myself when I am in trouble. This is called self-talk or having monologues. This is a kind of self-expression which is so much needed, especially during times of trouble or hard times. Doctors say that it is psychologically healing also. It makes you feel so light. 
I think every person does this in their life. We can get lots of solace for oneself and also many useful ideas are generated in our minds, which will help us to solve our problems. We cannot share everything with others. Sometimes there is no one nearby to talk to or to help us in our troubled times. So when we talk to oneself, we will never feel alone and can gain courage to solve any kinds of problems and face the world. Have you realized that when we talk to ourselves, our, our conscience gives us very good advice in life. So we should remember that there is a special friend within each one of us. Always listen to it, never ignore it. It's called your inner voice or your conscience. Now students, the writing part. A. Narrate in short a folk tale that you have read or heard. Students, I would like to tell you one important thing about story narration. When you narrate a story, many of you make a mistake of writing it sometimes in present tense and again sometimes in past tense. This is a great mistake that you make. Let me explain to you with example. Once upon a time, there was a clever fox. Here, you wrote the sentence in past. Then you write, one day he goes to the market. See, you wrote it in present tense. There, he meets a jackal. He told the jackal that he was feeling hungry. Here, you wrote the first sentence in present and again you wrote another sentence in past. This is how many of the students write stories or narrate a story which is really wrong. When you narrate a story you should say everything in past but depending on the situation sometimes and only sometimes we might have to write in present or future tense. But whenever we narrate a story, it's best to write in past tense. Some people also write it in present tense. That is not incorrect actually. But if you want to narrate a story in present tense, then use all the sentences in present tense. Like, there lives a clever fox in the forest. Once he goes to the market to buy some food. There, he meets the jackal and tells him that he is feeling very hungry. I hope you got the idea, students. Now, let me narrate to you all a beautiful fox story or fox tale, which I heard from my father when I was small. Let me define fox tale first. A fox tale or fox story is a story originating in popular culture typically passed on by word of mouth. It is a tale or legend or traditional among people, especially one forming part of the oral tradition of the common people. These stories are carried down from generation to generation. Any belief or story passed on traditionally, especially one considered to be false or fiction or based on superstition and imagination. We find lots of fantasy, miracles, imaginations, make-believe words and magical happenings in folk tales. Now students, let me begin the story of folk tale. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful village. The people of the village used to work in their fields. So their lives were based in agriculture. And they also used to domesticate many animals in their houses like cows, sheep, goats, buffaloes, hens, pigs, ducks and chickens. So the villagers were living a peaceful life. When one day a clever fox entered that village, he was very hungry at that time. He saw the hens in the houses but there were also villagers nearby. So he hid behind the tree and cried loudly in a manly voice. Chill ayo, chill ayo. Or 
Eagle, eagle up in the sky. Hearing this cry, all the villagers looked up in the sky. At the meantime, the fox came out of his hiding place, grabbed one chicken or hen and ran, ran away from there. Later, when the villager counted his chickens, one chicken was missing or let's say one hen was missing. So he was worried. Second time also the same thing happened. So the villagers sat in a meeting and they decided that this time they would be very careful. When they would hear eagle eagle up in the sky, at that time some people would pretend that they are looking up in the sky and the others would stay alert and keep their eyes on their chickens and hens. So the next day again, the clever fox went into the village and hiding behind the tree, cried eagle eagle up in the sky. At that time, some villagers were pretending to look up in the sky and the others were alert and they were keeping their eyes on their chickens. When the fox was about to grab one of the hens or a chicken, the villagers caught him by the soldier and tied him tightly with a rope. Then they put him in a sack and tied him on the tree. On the sack they had pasted a level, the great chicken thief of the village. Anyone who passes by give him a big kick. So whenever the passerbys came and read this level, they would laugh and give this fox tied into the sack a big kick and the fox would howl with pain. In this way, the life of the fox was going on very painfully when one day there was a bear passing by. Seeing the bear, the fox cried loudly, I'm having such a joyful moment. Seeing this, the innocent bear asked, Shall mama, shall mama, what are you doing there? And this clever shall mama said, Oh, don't disturb me. I I'm having a great time. I'm playing a great swing. Can't you see? Just push me once. The poor bear could not read and write, so he could not read the level. He pushed the fox back and forth. While doing so, the fox cried with great joy. This poor innocent bear could not resist. He cried, Shall mama, shall mama, please let me also play. I also want to have fun in it. Please do let me play. Just once. Okay, just once. And the clever fox said, Okay, okay. How can I not let my nephew play when he pleaded so much? Just untie me and let me out of this sack. The poor innocent bear did so and this clever fox put the bear inside the sack, tied him tightly and pushed him back and forth. Then the fox ran away from there. The bear had great pleasure for some time. But after some time, when he tried to come out of the sack, he could not because he was tightly tied by a rope and he could not see the fox nearby. And after some time, the passerbys came and reading the level, they also used to give a good kick to the sack and the poor bear used to howl with pain. The next day, some passerbys thought here it is written fox, but when we kick the sack, the sound of beer comes. How is this? Then they soon realized the truth and they set the beer free from there. Then they again sat in a discussion saying that the clever fox had again made fool of this beer and had run away from the village. So they again made another plan to catch this fox. There was a big statue of Lord Ganesh in that village. They put a big laddu 
in one of his hands and put lots of glue on the body of Lord Ganesh. Next day, when the fox was just passing by, he saw this big laddu in the hand of Ganesh and he wanted to eat it. The villagers had also put lots of glue on this laddu. When the fox tried to pick up that laddu, his hand got stuck on it. Then he said, Oh, you think I don't have my another hand? So he gave Ganesh a big slap and that hand also got stuck on Ganesh. He tried to kick Ganesh with one of his legs and that leg also got stuck. And similarly, his another leg also got stuck on the body of Ganesh as the villagers had put lots of glue on the whole body of Ganesh. Now, the clever fox got cut like this and this time all the villagers came there, called the local police, put this fox in a cage and sent him to the national zoo forever. In this way, the villagers got away from this clever fox and thus they could live peacefully again. Students, what lesson do we get from this fox tale? We should not be too clever in life, otherwise we'll get good punishment for it from God. Or we have to bear for our action. Now question B, describe a strange dream that you have seen recently. I have already done it for you all in unit 5. And students, you can write about your dreams here. Now the last question, turn to page 117. The project work. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is a children's novel by English author Lewis Carroll, published in 1865. It is a story of a young girl named Alice falling through a rabbit hole into a fantasy world populated by peculiar and anthropomorphic creatures. With its fantastic tales and riddles, it became one of the most popular works of English language fiction. Read the whole novel or a similar novel in a library or in the internet and write its short review. Here you have to write a story review. As it is a single book, you can say a book review also. What is a story review or a book review? A book review is a form of literary criticism in which a book is merely described or analyzed based on content, style and merit. A book review may be a primary source, opinion, piece, summary, review or scholarly review. How to write a book review? Number one, start with a couple of sentences describing what the book is about. Number two, discuss what you particularly liked about the book. Number three, mention anything you disliked about the book. Number four, then round up your review. That means come to the conclusion. And number five, you can give the book a rating, for example, a mark out of 5 or 10 if you like. So students, this is how you can write a book review or a story review. That is all for today. I hope you all enjoyed it students. Goodbye and see you all in my next lesson.